Welcome everyone to Community Chat for December 2nd. We are really excited about this call uh, because this is the first time we are going to share uh, in a bit more detail the NativeScript 8.0 plan. So uh, some exciting stuff here that I'm going to uh, get into. And uh, to kick it off, we'll look at just NativeScript core uh, to start with as some others are still coming in here. So this is a uh, high level. These are really the main highlights for NativeScript 8.0 that has uh, been planned and is currently shooting for the Q1 of 2021. So that's the January to March timeframe. And in NativeScript core, there's some big features. Some are long, uh, been around and desired for quite some time. Uh, first of all, accessibility support. Uh, first class accessibility, there's been a plugin for that for quite some time um, that works pretty well, but it's needed some better uh, native handling. So we're excited to finally bring that in the spectrum. Um, also some long requested CSS support. One goes back to 2015. The box shadow is finally gonna be supported in CSS and then also text shadow, uh, both being done by great contributors as well in concert with some on the TSC. Uh, one really nice new feature that uh, has not been introduced since probably the early beginnings, I think Flexbox layout might have been one of the newer layout containers that was introduced after the initial release, um, but we're going to introduce a brand new layout called Root Layout. This is a brand new uh, concept that enables some rich layering that is really can be very difficult to do in different uh, framework integrations. We've achieved this sometimes in Angular before with some particular setups, but it always needed a bit more power and a bit more control over the actual layering and order. So this will be a layout container that will be a drop-in swap to your root layout in any application. And you can engage with an API that it will provide to where you can spawn views dynamically change the order of them on the fly and animate them in all sorts of ways. So we're excited about the potential this can bring for just more creative view work and it also be uh, provided in core so any front end framework integration can take advantage of it. Okay, next up is the native script CLI. Uh, of course, big on everyone's mind is the Silicon Mac support. We have been working on that. Uh, we've had a development kit for a couple months now and have been going through some of the tasks and items associated with that. And uh, that will be definitely part of the 8.0 release. In addition, we're going to expand some more options into the NativeScript config. So when the NativeScript config was introduced in NativeScript 7, the whole plan behind it was to steadily introduce some other power options into the config as well as conveniences. Uh, so this will provide some roll-ups of some things that you could do through flags on the CLI, but you could now set them inside the config just to provide an easier way to manage uh, some of those configurations. And this is not exhaustive by any means, but this is just, a, again, a highlight preview look at some of those more extensible options. Uh, next up is NativeScript Webpack. Another hot topic that's been on everyone's mind is Webpack 5 which is now, uh, I believe, still in an early release form, and some frameworks are starting to adopt it in experimental flags. We've been uh, experimenting with it, and um, Igor on the TSC has been leading that charge. Um, there's some really exciting things that this uh, enables. For instance, this is a look at a Webpack config in NativeScript 8.0 projects. That is it in totality, not missing anything. So this would be an example of the Webpack config JS you're used to seeing in your projects with a ton of stuff in it, um, but this would wrap up and detect automatically the front end integration that it's using. So whether it's using Vue, Svelte, React, or Angular, the environment init on the Webpack from the plugin will actually pick up and use the base config, and then you can override and chain in any additional customizations that you want. Uh, and when we release NativeScript 8, we'll have some examples of some customizations. This is really just a, a high-level look at one that might chain and set the mode to production all the time. Um, the other exciting thing about this is that it's going to allow NativeScript.webpack to be included on plugins. 
So plugins can also have the opportunity to provide custom Webpack uh, functionality. One, for instance, in this example is using an SVG loader that a plugin may need to use or deal with SVGs, and this could provide the ability to hook into Webpack. And this will automatically be picked up by NativeScript 8's Webpack setup, and it, any plugin that's included that has a NativeScript Webpack JS will be included in the chain and allow that uh, singular Webpack to drive all the customizations that you want. Next up is the NativeScript theme 4.0. Uh, we have really taken a liking to Tailwind and Tailwind CSS is gonna be at the backbone of NativeScript theme 4.0. Uh, for those not familiar with Tailwind, it's really a, a, a powerful utility uh, concept with CSS, which does uh, mirror some similarities to the original theme 1.0 with uh, some more standardizations. And because Tailwind has really picked up a lot of steam and there's now some communities kind of developing things around Tailwind, NativeScript will be able to take advantage of uh, quite a bit of that. So this is uh, really just a high level look at what uh, the Tailwind integration would bring. Um, more things from the theme would include some rollups of convenient classes for different looks and styles. Uh, things that would be optional if you wanted to engage with some of the uh, default theme classes. Um, next up is NativeScript Bionic. Uh, we have had some murmurs around this over the past couple months. Uh, there's been some focus on the installation process and also first class capacitor support. Um, this is really a high level look at what that integration looks like. This is the ability to import a native object that provides the ability to do native script inside of Ionic web views. So same native access you could get there and uh, rich development that you can get the direct uh, API usage. There's some uh, things around that API that we'll document uh, when that is ready. And we hope to do some pre uh, preview of that at least prior to the full 8.0 release uh, and have some people experiment with that more. Also, we are rewriting the docs from the ground up. Um, this is kind of a revamping of the docs. There are certainly portions of the existing docs that are pretty good and do cover some good topics, but we are going through them kind of from the bottom up and readjusting the layout and the general outline of the docs and you know, overall trying to revamp everything with the docs. Um, so that is a big uh, part of 8.0 as well. And then I also want to share this RFC process. Uh, for those that have been familiar in other open source projects, uh, there, some of them like Vue, for instance, uh, has a great RFC process to take in um, requirements either from the community or from those that are on the TSC and to introduce new features um, or anything that they would like to be added uh, or considered with the framework. There's now an official RFC process for that and that is located at NativeScript slash RFCS on GitHub and there's a process outline there. In fact, we'll take a look at that together. This is the repo that we started for this, and this outlines kind of just general what RFCs are, uh, really where they become useful in large open source projects and how you can create one yourself. And this is really what we're using to drive a lot of feature work that will happen in subsequent releases going forward. You know, we really want this to be as open and as transparent a process as possible, and RFCs are really a nice formal way to do that. Uh, where everyone can be engaged. You can take a look at ideas that are uh, popping up around the framework, things that are being considered, and will we'll generally try to reflect the proper major version target for things that come up in RFCs, certainly those that uh, end up into actual features that get implemented. Um, but definitely we welcome everyone to take a look at the RFCs. If you have something that's been on the back burner that's been in your mind for a while, 
that you'd love to be considered or be involved with, feel free to open an issue uh, on the RFC repo. Uh, it can be talked about in open there and, and really proceeded that way. Um, this particular issue, 9063, this outlines, I just wanna show this one. This is just posted up on the uh, NativeScript main repo. This is really a standard um, PSA that just has some links to uh, dive into some of those topics. So for anyone interested, should see that PSA at the top of the repo here if you want to uh, get into that a little bit more. And I believe that covers it for the 8.0 plan. High level look, again, to recap, uh, some features in NativeScript core covering accessibility, some long requested CSS support covering text shadow and box shadow, a brand new layout container with an API built in allowing dynamic view creation and layering uh, control. Also, uh, Silicon Mac support, the NativeScript config extensibility options, uh, also, Webpack to support Webpack 5, uh, greatly simplifying the Webpack configs. Make, this should make it a lot easier for people to maintain these Webpack configs that have gotten probably a bit out of hand over the years. Um, also, enabling plugins to engage in custom Webpack uh, hooks. Also, the theme 4.0 being based on Tailwind. Uh, the official Ionic integration support and a docs revamping uh, that will coincide with potentially some website look updates.